Welcome back. All right, so I've opted to keep things simple. I'm going to keep ranking them as top 12. So I did the top 12 goaltenders yesterday. Uh, we're going to do the top 10, top 12 defensemen today. I'll do top 12 forwards probably tomorrow. Uh, I'm recording this on August the 3rd, so if you get really mad, quite a few days ago I recorded it. Um, and I'm the entertainment guy, so, you know, hockey guy wanted nothing to do with it. Um, and this, this is because I know how the comment section can get when you talk about defensemen. I am well aware and uh, I'm all I'm all armored up for it. All right, so all that aside, I'll go ahead and give you guys the honorable mentions and explain. So Drew Doughty gets an honorable mention. Um, players and executives still feel he's a top 10 defenseman in the NHL. I don't think he's far off, but for me, he's not in the top 12. Uh, Noah Dobson doesn't quite make the top 12 either. We'll see how he does this year. He had a very, very good season this past year and, and gets an honorable mention. Uh, and from the Oilers, both Bouchard and Ekholm. Ekholm, I, I wanted to put in the top 12, but with who was number 12, I was like, can I really bump that player out for Ekholm? And my answer to that was no. Bouchard is an excellent offensive defenseman who does have some defensive uh, shortcomings that show up enough and often enough that I'm leaving him outside the top 12, but I will say that with another year of some good coaching and some development on his part, I think he ends up in the top 12 next season. I think Bouchard's that good. So that being said, those honorable mentions done. Let's go ahead and jump in at number 12. And at number 12, I better put the initial just so that people don't get thrown off. They shouldn't. Nobody should think I mean Jonathan Taves. Uh, but it's Devon Taves. Devon Taves, of course, in Colorado. Uh, excellent two-way defenseman. There are some who feel he's maybe better than McCarr. Maybe he's the one that makes McCarr look so good, all that kind of thing. But yeah, Taves for me does qualify for the tw top 12 this season. Uh, number 11 from Buffalo, Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin has had a very strong start to his career. Because of the fact that he plays in Buffalo, I think he gets overlooked a bit. Uh, if Buffalo was a better team, I think Dahlin would get more consideration for the Norris Trophy and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I, I still think Darlene is that good. And I, I think power is better than he gets credit for, too. I mean, we could get into the conversation of, you know, underrated and overrated and all that. But I, I think Darlene at this point in time is not necessarily underrated, but overlooked a little bit here and there because he plays in Buffalo. Yes. Uh, number 10, a favorite of mine. Everybody knows this. That's Jacob Slavin. Uh, Jacob Slavin, I think, as a defensive defenseman, might be one of the best or the best in the league, potentially. And again, I'm saying potentially, because when you say this person is the best, there's going to be stats or advanced stats that don't point to that player. There's always some vibes to this. There's always just subjective opinion with this, too. So with for me, with Slavin, I think the fact that he's shown a, a good amount of offense, too, the last couple of seasons, comparatively speaking with his defensive game, I think it gets him into the top 10. I agree. It would be nice if we had a Rod Langway Award for Defensive Defenseman or a Jacob Slavin Award for Defensive Defenseman. Uh, number nine on the board. Josh Morrissey, at some point in his career, I think is going to put together a season that's ridiculous from start to finish and win himself a Norris Trophy. I think that will happen at some point. Uh, Josh Morrissey is easily the best defenseman in Winnipeg. And again, because he plays in Winnipeg, might get overlooked a little bit compared to, say, other Canadian teams. Winnipeg getting a little bit less in terms of the, the media uh, coverage, unless it's something negative. Like, it feels like with Winnipeg, if you're going to get the, the, the mentions, it's going to be something negative with them. But uh, yeah, Morrissey, I think, is one of the best defensemen in the league. And I think he's remarkably consistent from season to season. Uh, number eight bursting into the onto this list and i i don't i don't think i had him on the list at all last year gustav forsling gustav forsling there were a lot of florida fans that got mad that he wasn't one of the finalists for the norris when the norris finalists were revealed they pointed to us plus minus which i mean plus minus is a suspect number and it doesn't get nearly as much attention i think as it used to although there are some fans who still swear by it um, usually when their favorite player has a really good plus minus, they decide the stats really awesome. That's what I've noticed is that people all of a sudden go, you know what? I think we should use plus minus because my guy's plus 40. So that's, that's the dividing line. But all kidding aside, Forsling showed in the playoffs just how good he was. 
And so it puts Forsling in the top 12. If not for the Stanley Cup run by Florida, if they got knocked out in the first round, would Forsling still be in the top 10? I don't know. But based on the playoff he had and just how well he he played against the best players on the other team, I'm, I'm putting Forsling at number 8. Uh, number 7. Remember, they got him on waivers. Waivers. Number 7. And lower than where players and... and uh, people within the NHL had him rated. Miro Haskinen. I like Haskinen a lot in Dallas. I do. That's kind of something that's been said throughout his career, of course, by me. Uh, but I think while Miro's an excellent defenseman, I just had six guys I felt like were ahead of him. Uh, Haskinen's very good offensively, good defensively. He's your prototypical all-around defenseman. There are far fewer uh, defensemen in the NHL that this during this era that are just all offense, comparatively speaking, I think, with any era since Bobby Orr. Uh, Bobby Orr revolutionized the game and became that attacking forward, basically, in Rover, but he still played really well defensively and started this trend towards the offensive defenseman. Now it feels like we're trending towards balance. Did you want an offensive defenseman? Yes, but you also want somebody who's good in their own zone. And so guys like Haskin and qualify there. Number six, we're into the top half. And it's another defenseman from a team I root for, and that's Charlie McAvoy. I think McAvoy might get a little bit underrated here and there, but he's a very good defenseman. I don't know if he ever wins a Norris, but, I mean, if he holds up a Stanley Cup in Boston, I'm happy with that, even if he doesn't get a Norris. I'm okay with that. I, I And I think most players are okay with not getting individual trophies if it means, hey, I get to hold up the Stanley Cup. Cool, I want to do that. So McAvoy, for me, gets number six on the board, so... Uh, again, players I root for, yes. Anybody wants to say, oh, I can't believe he's got... Yeah, well, there's good players on teams I root for. Uh, number five. Victor Hedman. Hedman had a, a, a year before this past one where his offense dropped off a bit. Sergachev was the offensive guy in Tampa. Then Sergachev this season gets hurt, and Hedman goes right back up to where he was offensively before that. Uh, Hedman, I've, and I've said this with him again in a recent video, I know that I've got pre-recorded to go live, which is that um, I, I'm surprised he only has one, one Norris trophy to his name. I think that uh, Hedman is a lock for the Hall of Fame as soon as he's, he's done and, and once that three-year waiting period's finished. So yeah, uh, Hedman, a lot of respect for me for Victor Hedman. I think he's a, an excellent defenseman for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Number four. So with Yossi, I was I was kind of on the fence as to whether to put him anywhere between five and three. I felt like anywhere between five and three was fair, so I kind of averaged it out to four. Um, we we've got five rabbits that are shedding right now, so there's a lot of rabbit fur. <laughs> so if I'm scratching myself a lot, it's because there's a lot of rabbit fur, and that's what me picking them up. Uh, but yeah, Yossi uh, gets number four on the list for me. I think he had a fantastic second half with Nashville after an iffy first half, but he wasn't alone having an iffy first half for the Nashville Predators this past season. So if he plays the full season the way he did that second half on next year's list, he may be higher than four. Number three, Adam Fox. Adam Fox is a defenseman that has some very, very vocal supporters that are, and, and many of them may be Ranger fans, but there are people who really love his game and feel like he doesn't get enough attention for what he does. Uh, I Routinely, I'm seeing Fox listed as one of the best defensemen in the game, and people really like Fox. So I'm not sure how accurate that is. I, I think a lot of it is because you only have one Norris Trophy winner. You can kind of get your nose out of joint when it's not the guy you're rooting for. So in this case, that'd be Adam Fox. But Fox's numbers this past season were excellent. He was just overshadowed because there were a couple of guys who just had better years than he did. And so Adam Fox is third on the list. But he's capable of a Norris Trophy. And if the Rangers win a Stanley Cup, I think he's capable of a, Col of a Con Smythe in that category, or in, in that way as well. Number two on the list, and I, I don't need to look, is Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes wins the Norris Trophy had a ridiculously good season, pretty much from start to finish. He slowed down a little bit in the second half. Uh, and I'm I'm not insulting him by saying that, just his first half numbers were insane. It's really hard to keep that up. 
Uh, but Quinn Hughes is one of the best defensemen in the NHL. And his defensive game, I think, is underrated at this point and deserves a lot of credit. I think his, his defensive numbers have gotten better. When he joined the NHL, his defense was kind of eh, but uh, it's got a lot better. I get a lot less nervous now watching him play than I did before as a Canuck fan, where I felt like, you know, uh, every now and then it was like, oh, Hughes was lucky there, or he got bailed out by his feet, or, oh, I don't know where he was putting that puck, but the other team picked it up and it's in their net. I don't feel that way anymore with Quinn Hughes. He's very smart with the puck. Um, his exits, his zone entries are very good. He's just, he's a good, solid all-around defenseman. Which brings us to number one. And what's interesting is, for years, I had Victor Hadman as the number one guy. And now it feels like it's it's the year of Kale McCarr. And again, we get into the, is he overrated, is he not? And I know there are people who feel like he's overrated. But as somebody who watches every game, and I do my best to watch every hockey game there is on TV. And yeah, it does get exhausting at times. But I think I think McCarr's the most talented defenseman in the National Hockey League. Does he rely on certain other players? Not, I don't think he relies on them. I think he clicks really well with guys like McKinnon on the ice. Uh, I think he's an excellent player. And, I mean, I, I, I really I can't find a hole in his game. And I don't. I think he's very, very good with the puck, very good away from the puck. Uh, and he brings a little bit of everything with him. So I, I think Makar is going to end up being one of those guys who ends up with three or four different Calders. I think there will always be the debate about whether or not he's overrated. I'm sure it'll be mentioned in the comments for this video as well. But again, for me, I, I could have put Hughes at number one. I don't know that I could have defended Hughes over Makar. I can defend Makar over Hughes. If Hughes has another season in 2024, 2025, like the one he just had, uh, next summer, these two may switch spots. Maybe Adam Fox jumps up to number one next year just to throw everybody off. But uh, for me, yeah, it's still, it's it's Makar number one and, and Quinn Hughes, I would put it two on the list. But... Again, you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I really enjoy putting lists together. I, I know that um, there are usually comments related to those lists. But I, I like I like doing list videos. And so I, I like to do them. I like them to post while I'm on vacation. And when you're looking at defensemen, again, everybody has different criteria they use. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.